Thanks for joining me, Grandmaster Matthew Sadler. We are going to look at a game um, that I was really proud of, um, which is my game from the English Championships this year. Uh, so that was held in Kenilworth in, I think, May. And it was a nice tournament because um, uh, Kenilworth is, I don't know if you know Kenilworth at all, Matthew, have you ever been there? No, I've never been there actually. I've heard the name of course, but... Uh... Well, it was a seniors event held um, in a hotel in the middle of town, but there was also a lovely castle nearby. So there's sort of good walks around the castle. Um, and, um, and it was just a friendly event. Uh, so this was, I think, the first time I ever played in a seniors event. And it was the English Championships. Um, so it was eventually won by uh, Grandmaster Mark Hebden, who I had to play in the last round um, and, and suffered in that game. But what I want to show you is, uh, is, of course, not a game where I suffered, but actually a game where I won. And this was against the very strong player, International Master Andrew Ledger. Let's have a look so, then, Natasha. OK, Thanks. here it is. Uh, so I decided to play a ready opening and i like this line here um i've played it lots of times before but this line is um recommended by grandmaster ramirez in his ready videos um and why i like it is because it kind of you know if you want to get in things like c5 later um it gains time to get that move b4 in one go you don't have to put your rook on the b file first or anything like that it just gets it in there straight away and once black's doing a king's indian or grinfeld type setup um the bishop's not is it, they're never they're never going to do this um like i think andrew Ledge doesn't do things like e6 from here because he's already played the g6 um so i don't need to worry about the b pawn being taken yeah i mean uh, in, a, in a king's indian structure then uh, having b4 in one go Without even having had to prepare it with rook b1, you know, like you would in the English or something, it's uh, it's quite powerful. So uh, yeah, no, this is pretty good. Um, it's quite a nice system actually. I enjoy it. I think that's the main thing, right? Because uh, and actually, that's what I was doing a lot this tournament in the um, in the English Championships was was playing. I didn't necessarily play um, lines I'd always played before. This one I have played before, but I didn't always do that. Um, but it was lines that I kind of enjoy and and uh, I sort of find B4 a fun move to play. But I had played this line against another ledger before, which was, oh. I believe, Steve Ledger um, with an early B4. And I was thinking about that during the game, about um, which ledger it had been. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you can, yeah. you can... so what are you meant to do? When they go D5, you take it off. Yeah, um, I mean, then it's quite good to exchange these bishops up here um, and get that king on the um, g7 square. And sometimes you get your queen to that long diagonal. Yeah, it surprised me slightly that he took on d5 with a knight after having played c6. I mean, you might play d5 immediately, but after playing c6, c takes d5 is, uh, you know, feels a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more natural but um yeah i mean it's uh it's it's you know it's it's an opening but uh um it, it is a little bit strange to go c6 and then knight takes d5 but i think he got tempted by your b4 pawn i think that was uh that was the thing i think he did i think he wanted to just take it right off but i defended it with queen b3 <laughs> which was good because then he couldn't take it but you know um yeah, it got quite sharp. This so it was it was was sharp right from the start. It was uh, and actually seen this specific plan against the system before. But yeah, quite interesting. But I liked your next move, uh, Natasha. I thought this was quite. Uh, I liked it as well. And and um, I think we were both kind of making it up already by. Ah, absolutely. This yeah. Stage. Um, well, I was anyway, and I think he was too. Um, um, but this seemed to be. I'm not going to remember my entire thought process at the moment, but if he took it with the queen, then he was going to get these double pawns. And I think I'd calculated even that it was it was going to be quite fine for me and I could get it back. And um, he actually threw in an intermediate move, A4. Yeah, it's always difficult to know whether these are good or not. I mean, on the one hand, it gains a tempo. On the other hand, his queenside pawns get a little bit... Uh... 
a little bit static uh, like that. You know, if you had the pawn on a5, it would be easier to push b4, I think. But uh, yeah, difficult. I mean, it's one of those uh, tricky, tricky ideas. But this was very yeah. nice. I like this very much what you did here. Yeah. So black kind of wins a pawn, but it's not going to be easy to defend that one. That like the one on b5 is going to be a bit of annoying for him to keep hold of if he wants to. So I got my knight in and attacked it straight away. And, and so you're also attacking defends. the knight on b5. So he's really got only got one move to defend both there. Yeah. And then I attacked again. And this move here, rook defending the a pawn. You'll see like a bit later in the game that that rook kind of gets a bit stuck there as it happens. Like yeah, just, it, never, it, it, ne it never gets to a happy place, this uh, this rook. It's just uh, always, uh, yeah, always uh, caught up there somehow. It's, yeah. Uh, so I keep attacking, he keeps defending that B pawn. Um, and then I took this, um, the one on B7. So now if I do manage to win the B5 pawn, um, then I'm going to be material up. So I sort of feel like my pieces are now the more active because just because of this rook's a bit stuck on defending here. Yeah, I mean it's quite it's quite a quite an unclear position, I think. But uh, I mean it's it's just a very nice unbalanced thing where you know basically anything could happen really. So uh, mm. um, pretty good. Really. Is it I not? Because I, I, I was probably thinking it was quite good for me, but maybe I'm going to now turn the engine on. No, it's not at all. It's not. Good no, for you. the engine thought it was uh, it was equal. Just yeah. equal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fair enough. All right. Well, but uh, but I mean you know it, there's there's equal and equal, right? I mean there's equal where you're just going to shake hands and uh, and agree a draw, and there's equal like yeah. this where you know. Look at this pawn. The pawn structure's uh, unclear. You know, you, you could decide to put your pieces anywhere. So it's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think any 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 ready English player would be really happy. You know, from uh, from this position. You know, why aren't uh, I just better though? For my aforesaid reasons about that rook being stuck. Yeah, I mean, Black's going to get some space, right? I mean, he's going to play what he did in the game with the e five um uh, black's going to get a bit of space um i mean you've always got that long-term b5 weakness but on the other hand yeah you've got to get your pieces uh, sorted out to uh to get it all together so yeah you know it's uh okay. fair I, enough I, I, th I thought maybe after knight c2 he should play uh bishop c6 for example that was that was one idea right okay so e5 knight c2 so I maybe bishop c6 and just swap bishop c6 here or uh or even maybe knight c6 and then try and get that bishop on b7 somehow you know, go rook yeah. b eight, and uh, you know, I thought that that was that was the the, the most obvious way to play. Really, bishop h three is kind of a middle game move. You know, it, it's sort of stopping you from castling there, but you sort of think, well, yeah. you know, I imagine right because I imagine Andrew was wanting to keep all maximum winning chances as exactly. well, so he was yeah. probably trying to get me in trouble um, yeah. by doing this one. But I think also it's a very it's a very complicated position. So you know, you, yeah, you can easily make mistakes as well. I think any, sure. you know, any player of any strength there. And knight, this is this is a nice move. I like your next move. You know, you just put this knight on this lovely, this lovely entrenched square, and uh, you're aiming at c6, which makes black maybe regret bishop h3 um, uh, a little bit. You know, it's always nice when you you play a move that that attacks a square that the opponent's just unprotected. It's a nice mm. you know nice psychological uh, feeling there. So uh, mm. yeah, he needs to now. Now Black's you know suddenly needs to think. Oh, you know, how am I going to get my uh, my knight on b8 developed? You know. Yeah. So rook d8 d3. So I'm kind of not really going to castle now because of his put his bishop on h3. Um, now, this was a nice move because you're you're sort of thinking about g4 here now. So I wanted just, to do g4 because then it shuts this bishop off. Indeed. Um, but he he was he knew all about that. He just put his bishop <laughs> back again. <laughs> he worked it all out. So he, he wasn't gonna let me just win his bishop, no way. But 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 now his bishop's gone, I can start doing this um h4 stuff that we know so well. And what this I was, was really gonna nice. do, I mean this was really nice. Yeah, uh, I was gonna uh, try and get it up to here and then make that pawn a a, a target um yeah. for later now, on in yeah. the game. It's a it's a very nice it's a very nice idea and I do think he should probably have, yeah something like h five maybe was uh, would have uh, with you know in retrospect would have been quite sensible just to uh, just to ask you to find another plan although you know you go knight e four and then you've got you know g five you've got c five as squares I, I quite like you know I do quite like White's position here you know so uh, but um, yeah. but what happened was lovely so he did um, f five and. 
I I wasn't sure if this was really the best move, but I wanted to play it, which was H5, and just carry on with this. I, I think it's very good because, I mean, uh, you know, you, you've got the H file coming, and uh, look at his rooks. They're completely badly placed to, to deal with any of that. So yeah, I, think, I think an attack on the king side was, was perfect strategy. Because, yeah. you know, often, you know, you get some sort of gain on one side, like the queen side, like you've got here, and then you try and make everything happen there. But often when you've got that sort of advantage, Playing on the other side of the board is really powerful, and uh, yeah, this is this worked out brilliantly. So bishop b three. Yeah, and that and gave you g four. G four. Opening it up a bit. Um, knight e six, and h six. So I just wanted to keep that pawn in there just to um, be annoying for the end game. So yeah, it was it was it was, a, it was a good move. It was a good move. You know, so I'm sure Alpha Zero would have approved. It was that was an alpha zero. I was thinking of alpha zero at the time. So takes takes and then rook h five. So I'm just going to try and come in on the um, yeah. king side a bit. Knight d four. So that was I think was probably good. Um, and he's like kind of getting counterplay against my bishop, yeah. and I didn't want to let him take my bishop because I like that bishop. So bishop d five. Um, and then we swap yep. bishop instead. And um, yeah, I mean, what's really nice about this, I, I guess, is that you know that knight on d four is a key defensive piece, but it's totally unstable. I mean, you've just got e three chasing it away, and um, yeah. and then after that, I mean, you know, look at that rook on h five. You've, you've put it beautifully there. You know, it's uh, attacking f five and e five, even b five across. You know, it's really uh, suddenly you know you're not quite sure you know exactly how or why, but Ever, suddenly all of your pieces are suddenly way better than the opponent so you know it's looking really yeah cool. and also because i can get this um c files quite nice isn't yeah. it c so, files gorgeous as well gorgeous. yeah um here but now he's trying to attack my h pawn so i kind of just drop back yeah um knight d7 e3 uh forcing the knight to go away so knight back to e6 and so the question is can i kind of get because my rook, certainly this rook's more active than that one. Can I get this one right into the game before he has time to kind of relocate his rook? So rook yeah, I, I think here we saw that actually you had a really funny idea, actually. You could have gone the uh, knight e7 check. Ah, let's see this one. Yes. So this is knight this is a note. Um, yeah. So knight e7 check. King F6, F6 and then knight c8. Knight c8. And that rook on d6, funnily enough, has got no squares. It's funny that the it's the rook on d6 that's got no squares rather than the rook on a5, you know. But uh, but that was uh, yeah. that was but it's quite a quite a, uh, it's quite um, it's extremely unusual. I've never seen I'll tell you what, before. even that first move, like um knight e7, you kind of feel like it must be attacked there somehow or something. It just yeah, because kind of, yeah, it's got a uh, square of pieces that it kind yeah. of doesn't look possible, but that was quite but I mean, you know, a move like rook c8 is just like, yeah, you know, rook c8. Because if I, mean, I can get this h7 pawn, if I can take that, and you'll see I do in later in the game, then um, my h6 pawn is going to be really scary, exactly. Yeah, rook e1, and so now I've got two open files, so that's quite nice. Now, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, the, the value, if you just look, you know, piece for piece, all of your uh, pieces are way better than, uh, you know, than, uh, than black, so yeah, it's uh. It's excellent. So knight c7, knight g6. I did sort of make a, a bit of a slip here, but it didn't seem to matter that much because um, this move here, then I can't move my rook without losing my knight. But as actually the the sort of strategic plan comes into play because I can just... Um, yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's, it's good know. enough already. It's good it's, enough. It's, this this, is, this enough. is just completely winning uh, already, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, Six, yeah, you did it very nicely. I was very nice. nervous by this stage, actually. Um, yeah, of course. I was enjoying the game a lot, but also very nervous um, because he's such a good player. And um, here we go. Yeah, this was, this was very nice. I mean, it's really, it's quite a slow motion sort of attack you know, in, in a way. You know, you seem to be taking ages and ages, but that H pawn is just so strong. You know, yeah, because uh, if he like plays his knight. To say he plays his knight to e7 or something here. This was actually the final position he resigned. Um, I could, um, I think, just take it off and h7, h8. Yeah, you've got rook f8 check and h7. You could just yeah. push h7. Yeah, yeah. It's really just, uh, 
it's unbelievably winning actually it's uh um, and the nice thing is that rook is still on a5 you know the, the rook that he played there you know on uh, on move 11 or 12 is uh yeah it's still there cool okay so nice thank game. you very much Matthew. that was that was the game um and that was the game that won me the english women's senior title so um so well maybe not that game because i was the only one in the tournament but um but it meant i was like you know, like if you are, I suppose you probably don't because you've never been the only woman in a tournament. But if you are, and then you do well as well, then that yeah, no, kind of makes it much yeah. much nicer. But I mean, you know, Andrew's a really strong player, and uh, I know, and was, I know. And this, was, and this was a this was a really lovely game. You know, it was a, a lovely quality game, and uh, and lots of uh, you know lots of great stuff in it. So, uh, no, nah, quite right to be uh, super proud of it. Brilliant. Okay, thanks very much for going through that with me. And no uh, problem. And we look forward to when you're a senior as well. <laughs> a long time yet, a long time a yet. Long, still, which is, still... what, wait, 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 wait. No, it's not too long because you're born in 74. Yeah. So next year you can't, but the year after. So it's only actually 12 months away. And then you can play in any senior event. 12 months There's is a long, long time. To wait it's a talk. long time in chess. <laughs> 12 months, a long time in chess. All righty. Thank you very much. Thanks very much.